Also, on, guys, kind of gained back here again with some more Pierce Morgan Uncensored. This one is called Pierce Morgan on Prince Harry and Meghan Markle's money grabbing betrayal. So, you know, we all know that the, the Meghan, Meghan Markle and Prince Harry married and they left to Canada or America or something like that. And now they don't want to be part of the, you know, you know, the sphere that is the royal family, but they're still making tons of money off of releasing books and shows, all this kind of thing. And Pierce Morgan basically wants to call them out. And I haven't watched this one yet. Make sure to hit that subscribe button. Check out my Patreon as well. This one should be gas. Man, let's get it. Well, good evening, London. Welcome to Piers Morgan Uncensored. Harry and Meghan, the currently the Duke and Duchess of Sussex, famously gushed about their love of chickens in one of the more saccharine moments of their Oprah Winfrey sob fest. Well. The chickens are now coming home to roost for these two. Oh, the royal family kept a stoic silence as the poison darts rained down from their Californian pedestal. But King Charles <laughs> is quietly and devastatingly taking charge now. We now know that he booted the couple out of their palatial Frogmore cottage just 24 hours after Harry's book Spare, or Spare Me as I call it, was published. Dude, that's too good. Dude, I hate Piers Morgan, but the last few months he's been a don. Piers Morgan's been killing it, guys, with this uncensored stuff. 830,000 views, bro. He's been killing it, bro. He should have done a YouTube channel from the beginning. Why wasn't he on YouTube? He said the, the new, the new Harry's new book, Spare Or. <laughs> As he likes to call it, spare me, bro. I love it. I love it. We also now know that Harry and Meghan's popularity is cratered on both sides of the Atlantic, with polls showing even Prince Andrew is now more popular than they are in America, as well as now being offered the keys to their house. <laughs> and we also now know that in America, where they've strained every sinew to become much less celebrities, they're actually viewed like this. So let me start with you, Sam. You've lived a life with the royal family, you've had everything handed to you, but you say your life has been hard, and now you've written all about it in your new book, Where? Yes, Wah. that's right, friend. You see? Where? As in, like, crying, like a crybaby. Hey, my wife and I are totally like, you should write a book, because your family, like, stupid, and then so are, like, journalists. I'm delighted Bro, to introduce you. That's too funny. South Park never misses, guys. They're, they're always on point, man. South Park is boss. So, basically, a lot of people are mad at the, print, the, the, the royal family because... You know, they had everything handed to them and they're all rich and famous, grew up rich as hell. And then they're saying that they had, you know, a tough upbringing, which everyone knows they didn't, guys. I mean, if you grew up in the royal family, like, you just didn't have a tough upbringing, guys. There's no two ways about it. You know, shout out to him. I think he served in the army and stuff like that for a few years. But, you know, that's legendary. That's a tough gig. You know, that's, you know, all props to him. But in terms of growing up bad, it's not really the case, right? Couldn't be, right? There's now a clear divide in the royal family, the workers and the shirkers, the heavy lifters and the grifters. The Prince and Princess of Wales saluted Welsh guards yesterday at St David's Day Parade. Camilla, the Queen Consort, recovering from a recent bout of COVID, was promoting children's literature. King Charles is preparing to make state visits to Germany and France in his first royal tour as monarch. Meghan Markle, meanwhile, made a state visit to a coffee shop which sells superfood lattes inspired by holistic ingredients from around the world. And Prince Harry had another outing on US late night television, the leftovers of a previous interview taped on his self pity tour. Harry, what is the best sandwich? Mm. I would say a cheese and ham toasty with Dijon mustard on top. And a toasty means grilled? Is yeah, that what yeah, that means? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, there you go. Unbelievable. That guy's sixth in line to the throne. On Saturday, <laughs> he's at it again, flogging tickets to a digital seminar of family trauma. His trauma from his $13 million California mansion. Uh, you have to pay yeah, 30 it's just people are basically saying that he grew up so rich and stuff. How the hell can you have any problems? I guess you still can. You can still have problems, but... Most people would die to be in his situation, right? Most people would give their friggin' left nut to be in their situation, guys. Come on, bro. Like, the guy's worth 13 million. That's just his house. He's probably worth 100, you know, right? It's $3, by the way, to tune in to, online to see him banging on about his trauma again and what a victim he is and how it's all so beastly and unfair that he's making hundreds of millions fleecing his royal titles Ooh. without doing any royal duty for it. Ooh. But that's his level now, isn't it, for Harry? A gossiping gutter snipe selling out his family to the highest bidders, a wannabe reality star. But that star is fading fast. Harry and Meghan think they can carry on having their royal cake and eating it. Using those royal titles, I can say, while abusing the institution that afforded them those titles. And as usual, I'm afraid, they're wrong. And King Charles is right to draw the curtain on this ludicrous soap opera. On May the 6th, the king has his coronation. 
It will be one of the most important moments in modern British history. And the very last thing we need or want are the Duke and Duchess of Sussex, current titles, rocking up with their camera crews to distract attention and get more material for their next act of money-grabbing betrayal. Next week, 2,000 invitations will be sent out. In my view, it's time for Charles to be firm and make sure they're not on that list. Well, joining me now is the Sun World editor, Matt Wilkinson, political journalist, Ava Santina, plus author and columnist, Maureen Callum. Well, welcome to all of you. Let me start with you, Matt. Great scoop. I mean, this was a proper eye-popping scoop, particularly now that we know that the order to evict Harry and Meghan from Frogmore Cottage came from King Charles within 24 mm. hours of the launch of Spare back on January the 10th. Yeah, no, it's astonishing. I mean, Charles, I see it as he's acted very quickly, very decisively, particularly it was so close to so close to after Spare. And he's seen the, the family's traumas, the family splits, everything that's happened with Meghan and Harry and Andrew that kind of poisoned the last three or four years of, of the Queen's reign, sadly. And you could say that like, Charles has finally by kicking them out of Frogmore, he's kind of finally delivered Mexit. No, I don't suppose you'll lose much sleep over Meghan Markle um, d disappearing out of Frogmore Cottage. He probably will lose some sleep over this action in relation to his son, because he's his son. It's very sad that it's got to this stage, isn't it, really? I mean, we're That's always told... Sad. and he has Money makes you friggin' just go crazy. Man. Shown Imagine. as well that he, we're always told that he dearly loves his son. And sure he the does. door is always open to his son. When Harry came over recently, they came over, they came over with Meghan and they came over and they met her at Clarence House. And I think it's an intense disappointment and sadness for Charles that it has actually got to this stage, yes. Let's bring in Maureen Callan uh, from across the pond uh, over in East Hampton. Maureen, thank you for joining us. Um, I was staggered last week to see a poll that said that Meghan and Harry, since the release of this book and the Netflix documentary, are now less popular in the US than Prince Andrew. I mean, that was jaw-dropping. Oh, Piers, it's remarkable, really. Uh, there's no love lost here for Prince Andrew, believe me. Um, I think the, the, the real sort of final wallop to their reputation here, one that leaves no doubt where the bulk of the American public stands on these two was the South Park episode. So for this- South Park just, just cut their damn head on, that's crazy. Man, South Park is just, they never miss, man. They're just fired. South Park episode to air and it went viral <laughs> and people could not stop talking about it to then be followed up with this incredibly it's a sad decision, but it feels very necessary for King Charles to remove them, to send a clear message that what you are doing and what you are continuing to do, as you pointed out, with this Saturday's upcoming Wingeathon online for $33.99, uh, with pre-vetted questions, no live comments, I do believe that's King Charles saying, there are more things we can take away from you if you do not stop harming this family. Right, I completely agree. Well, look, Ava, you're in the, uh, well, the unenviable position of trying to defend these two, because I think pretty much everyone else we tried to get to do it didn't want to know. I mean, they've lost even their keenest supporters. Damn. Are you still standing in team? This lady, she hates on everyone, guys, but she loves the freaking royal family. Let's get it, guys. This lady, I remember her from the freaking Tate specials, not... Bro, forget about Six. it. Look, I, don't, I have never been Team Sussex. I've always been Team Anti-Monarchy and Anti-Royal. I don't think that any of them actually have a place at the top of the hierarchy in the UK anymore. I think it's outrageous that they even had entitlement still to this cottage. I mean, when they renovated it, they charged £3 million to the taxpayer, which I know they eventually <sighs> paid back. But the idea that £3 million was taken away, potentially from paying nurses, from paying teachers... Bro, England's just a joke, bro. England's just a joke, bro. Like, looking at you guys from Ireland, we're like, what are you guys doing, man? It's just a joke, bro. And re-wallpapering that cottage. Well, the truth about sick. the royal family is, though, that the costs of maintaining the royal family are offset by the money oh, they bring in. On. Well, they are. Oh, come on. They're it's so offset. ridiculous. They're offset by the money that comes in, particularly from tourism. Listen, people come in they because they... No, people they like are, to see... Business. People like to see Buckingham like Palace. It. They the way, like to see... It? They like to see the relics of our monarchy past. Is your physical distress tonight they... because you were at the Arsenal Everton game last night? <laughs> I your am team crying. Yeah, I am. Hammered. Have you been crying ever since? I have been. Yeah, that was the hundredth time that Arsenal have beat Everton. Yeah. that last night. And you that got was an really quite upsetting. Booting last night. So I, I just want to make sure you're okay. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. The most British conversation I've ever heard. Pelican tonight. Um, <laughs> but yeah, the point about the monarchy, though, is you're wrong about that because 
You may not like the idea of it, that's fine, but they don't actually cost the country any money. They're a net positive. They cost the country a fortune. And Prince Charles has a lot of that's, his that's own money. Prince Charles has a lot of his own money. Actually, enough to Ava, sustain himself. He does true. not need to be taking money off the taxpayers Ava, to, to live his life. You can keep telling me they cost a lot of money. Mm -hmm. They don't. OK, they could are you tell me positive. how they don't? Tourism is... But I they would come without them. Matt? They would come to see the castles. Is that true, guys? I don't think... I've, I mean, I've visited England once in my life, or twice, but only London once. And that was just to see, like, the architecture and stuff, you know? That. People don't come to see the king and queen and stuff. Nobody really cares about that. They come to see, like, Westminster House. They come to see, like, the Big Ben. And they see all these, like, different things in the city, right? They don't really care about the royal family. You're not going to be able to see them anyway. They're, in, like, shut up in this house, right? It's like... It's also the incredible good work that they do, not for their own benefit, but for the benefit of the country. They don't have to go out and work for all the, do all this wonderful work for charities. They don't have to go out and raise the profile it. for charities. You would do they're it. They're not I doing it for do their it. own personal gain. Go. They're doing it because they're members <laughs> of the royal family. You can't even go to a crown. football match without getting upset. I would happily here. read a book today, like Camilla did, and then get to live in a palace off the back of that. I'd it's love a lot to harder do it. job than that. I Camilla's been to prisons and, and uh, read books. To, I'll do to, that. To also, every tiny spit and cough of your private life will be spattered across the papers. Would you be? Fine, with fine. Really? <laughs> it's so boring. Well, anyway. I know, given I failed to even rally a tiny slither of support from you for the Sussexes, that's all, obviously the white crowd have all abandoned them. Yeah, so uh, no hate on that lady. She actually was like, yeah, actually, I hate them as well. She kind of, I'm pretty sure she kind of did a, a full 180 U turn. I don't think anyone likes the royal family. Guys, in Ireland, we didn't have any of that bullshit. You know, when we look at the royal family, we're like slavery, you know what I mean? Purgatude, whatever you call that word, slavery and all that shit for like. 700 years, you know, I know a lot of people don't want to call Irish people being slaves or ruins, being rolled over and colonized by a country for 800 years because that's that's slavery to me guys. that's shit, right? The, the British just treated Irish people like absolute dog shit like I think people play that down a lot re uh, recently, but yeah The British family guys leave what you guys want in the comments down below Get a little bit of an argument going. I love you all. and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace